but this is what I saw. I saw a vision on February 29th where I was looking down over ocean waters and then I could see them like kind of running beneath me and I was looking at them and then I saw it and the waters were leading to a beach with a sandy hill that was running up and I saw a row of boats or ships being pulled out of the sand. And there's a very timely message here and I believe it's the main thing that's messing up the church today. Hey y'all, this is Troy. So I have a word from the Lord to share with you today. And I know that sounds redundant for some people because that's how I start almost every video. I know the Lord speaks quite often through this ministry. I just sense the Holy Spirit leading me to share this simple encouragement. If you have any doubts about prophecy in general, whether it's for today or not, whether it's true, whether it's real or not, whether God still speaks through people today or not, I would encourage you, number one, to go do a deep dive into prophecy in the New Testament, in Scripture. But number two, to take it to the Lord in prayer, pray about it and say, Holy Spirit, if this is from you, please show me in the Word of God and please let me know, verify, confirm this to me if this is from you. But then also, even on top of that, I would say, when it comes to specific prophecies like this one, do the same thing, test it, run it by the written word, pray about it, see what the Lord has to say. So this is something I saw and heard back on February 29th. I saw a vision from the Lord and there's a very timely message here. And I believe it's one of the most critical messages for the church to hear today. And I just, I'm, I'm getting the confirmation of the Lord on that, that this is the main thing that's messing up the church today. It's now it's affecting the church and messing it up in a variety of different ways. But this is the main problem, you know, and if you get online, you can quickly see that everybody's saying, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. There's a lot of little fires, right, to put out. And sometimes instead of putting fires out, we throw fuel on the fire thinking that we're helping, you know, and we're not necessarily. But it, it really comes down to what is the Holy Spirit asking us to do? And that's what we need to be motivated by. But this is the main problem. And you're going to see that in Scripture in a second as well. But this is what I saw. I saw a vision on February 29th where I was looking down over ocean waters and I could see them like kind of running beneath me and I was looking at them. And then I saw it as it, I kind of looked up and the waters were leading to a beach with a sandy hill that was running up like away from the beach. And it was like running down toward the beach. And what I was seeing in this vision, it, it's like I panned up, you know, it's like I looked up. And I saw a row of boats or ships being pulled out of the sand. It was like a row of several of them. And they were being as if they were buried under the sand and then they were pulled out, like dislodged, like they had been there for a while. And I heard the Lord say this. He said, a fleet of ships, they will be found lost in time centuries ago. And then he said, centuries old. So I believe this is a word of knowledge about something happening in the future. God did not give me a timeline on when this is going to occur but I, I believe at some point we're going to see this happen and, and I'm going to do a follow-up video and, and let you know uh, when that occurs. But we are also actively working on a prophecy archive. So we're working on a digital archive on my website. It's not public yet, but I'll let you know as soon as it's out there where you can go and you can do the research for yourself. And we're going to have a very easy to understand, easy to read way to go look at what prophecies have been shared. And what has happened? What are the results? And there's a lot of them, obviously, but we're going to try to get as much of that information up there as possible for you to be able to do the research for yourself. And I believe it's going to it's going to act as a testimony for the gift of prophecy. But it's not just that God speaks today, but that he loves you and he has a plan for your life. Because that's the message that God keeps preaching through this ministry over and over and over again. He wants a personal relationship with every person, not just those outside of the church, but those inside the church who feel lost or who feel far from God. The word says those who were far away were brought near because of the blood, because of what Jesus did. They can come near now. And this is the problem, okay? Because I prayed about this and I said, Lord, what does this represent? What does this mean? What are you trying to say through this vision, right? And the Lord actually reminded me, he had me go and do some research about Charles Spurgeon, famous theologian. I'm going to read a few quotes here. So this is, this is one of the things he said, preach you Christ and Christ and Christ and Christ, and nothing else but Christ. Another thing he said is, if we are to see the church of God really restored to her pristine glory, we must have back this plain, simple gospel preaching. I do believe that the hiding of the cross beneath the veil of fine language and learned dissertation is half the cause of the spiritual destitution of our country. Then he said, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. This is the gospel message that Jesus came to the earth as the Son of God and as man. 
and he lived a perfect life. And then he died on a cross, willingly taking the sins of the world and the punishment for our sins upon himself. And he bore that punishment and that weight. And he died on that cross, taking our place. On the third day, he rose again because of Jesus' sacrifice, because of what he did. We as human beings can believe in him and we can be forgiven of all of our sins and we can be set free. We can be made new and we can be made whole in him and we can come into fellowship with God. We can become friends with God again. And if you need that today, I encourage you to call out to the Lord right now. The word of God says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you run to Jesus today and you say, I believe that with all my heart, the Lord will save you and you will begin a personal relationship with him. God loves you and he loves to see his children come home. But listen, my friend, here's what's happened in the church today is we have done one of two things. We have either talked so much that we have not gotten around to preaching Christ or we've gotten distracted by other things and we've gone past him. And the different denominations and the different movements and the different uh, Christians with different agendas, a lot of times we'll point fingers to the other side and we'll say, well, they're the problem. But the problem is not preaching Christ. The problem is not making it about him. See, on one side, we have the religious folks. You know, I love theology and we need good theology. But what can happen is people can fall into a Pharisee type of mentality, you know? And Jesus said to the Pharisees, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, but you're unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. So he said, hey, you've got all the theology, you've got all the Bible knowledge, but you're not willing to make this personal. They never made it about him. They made it about what they knew. This is what the word says. Second Corinthians 3, 14 says, but their minds were made dull for to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So that he's talking about the veil that was on the, the eyes of the, the Jews, right? And they did not receive their Messiah when he came. But this same idea is still happening today in the church, even to people who really are saved, in that they begin to focus so much on the knowledge that everything turns into a discussion or an argument or a theological debate, and Christ is left by the wayside, and the preaching of Christ is neglected. And it becomes about what you believe theologically about secondary issues instead of, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If so, we can walk in unity together. But then what happens on the other side, and I'm not here to point fingers, this is just what the Holy Spirit led me to say today, so I hope that you can hear this in love. What can happen on the other side is we can get so caught up, you know, the charismatic movement and everything, we can get so caught up with experiences and dreams and visions and things that we end up going past Jesus. And we start to exalt the experiences we've had with God over being with God. This is what the Word continues to say. Colossians 2 it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Verse 18 says, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with the idle notions by their unspiritual mind. Another translation says, They take their stance on visions they have seen. So he's describing a person that's made it all about the experience. And they talk about, hey, this is I saw angels this time, I saw this, this happened, this happened. Listen, is it okay to talk about experiences we've had with God? Yes, I've done it. I know a lot of people that do it in a healthy way. But the problem is, if we make it all about the experiences, the same thing happens. Christ and the preaching of the gospel gets neglected and our focus gets off from the main thing. But there's... There's a straight and narrow road right here in the middle. And it's not, it's, I'm not talking about the middle of cessationism and the charismatic movement. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about eyes that are centered on Jesus Christ and Christ alone. This is what the word says. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13 says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action, keeping sober in spirit. Set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it's saying here, our hope should not be set on how much Bible knowledge we have, how quote unquote perfect our theology is, although theology is important and we need to 
be willing to be corrected when necessary. Our hope should not be on what kind of experiences we've had, how strong we are in the prophetic, any of that kind of stuff. Although I believe God still moves in the gifts of the Spirit today, our hope should be set completely on the grace to be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Grace is unmerited favor. So what's he saying here? He's saying set your hope completely on what Jesus has already done for you. Because without that, we're nothing. Without that, we're lost. It doesn't matter how much we learn. It doesn't matter how much we experience without Jesus. We don't have anything. And here's what happens on both sides of this coin. If we do not set our hope on the grace of God and what Jesus has done for us at the cross, if we don't set our hope on his sacrifice on the cross and then his final coming, his return, we don't set our hope on him as a person. What ends up happening is we begin to live moralistically and we start to set our hope on how good we're doing instead of what he's done. And what ends up happening is I went to a church one time and what was being preached was a message of, now everybody needs to try to sin as little as possible because this is this is what we need to focus on. We all need to focus on sinning as little as possible. And although most people would say they wouldn't say it that way, if you really take a step back and look at what's being said, that message a lot of times is being preached on both sides because we've taken our eyes off of Jesus. Now, should we sin? No. Should we walk in righteousness? Yes. But is sinning as little as possible what our hope is supposed to be set in? No supposed to be set completely in the grace of God to be revealed at the coming of Jesus. So our hope is set in what Jesus has done. And we look at what his sacrifice means on the cross and we say, wow, because of what Jesus did, I'm righteous in God's eyes today. I'm welcomed into his presence. I'm welcomed into his family. And I want to learn the ways of God. I want to have good theology because I love God and I want to know about him more. I want to know what he's like. And I want to experience him because I love him and I want to walk with him. Here's the truth, my friend. A heart that has its hope set in Jesus and the grace of God it doesn't want to sin anymore. It doesn't want to get distracted by other things. It doesn't want a veil over its eyes anymore. It wants to see Jesus clearly. This is Hebrews 3.12, and I'm going to finish with this. It says, Take care, brothers and sisters, that there will not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. So what is this verse putting the emphasis on? It's saying, if your heart is unbelieving, then it's an evil heart. Why? Because we are only made righteous through believing in what Jesus has done for us. The word of God says people look at the outside, but God looks at the heart. God's not looking at our theology knowledge. He's not looking at our experiences. He's looking at our hearts. And he's saying, is Jesus on the throne of your heart today? And if he's not, listen, here's the good news, my friend. And just come back, just come to him. Cast your cares upon him. Lay your burdens down. Stop carrying a weight you were never meant to carry. Take his yoke upon you and say, Jesus, I want to make this personal again. I'm coming back to you with all my heart. Help me to put my hope in you. Help me to set my eyes on you and not to make it about anything else. I love you all so much. I'll see you next time.